what does that make a defense do if they know at some point maybe you guys are setting it up to have him try and run behind the secondary? Yeah, I mean, at some point they have to decide what they're going to, I guess, be weak at, whether they're going to give you uh, – play, play softer and give – give you the underneath routes or if they're going to you know tighten down to stop the the slow painful death and now now they're susceptible to the deep shot so it's it's kind of they got to pick their poison on a kid like that and really any receiver but but him specifically with, with him with him specifically uh did he have a slow preseason camp or was he kind of banged up a little bit i mean just uh yeah he, he seemed to be almost a forgotten guy for some people you know yeah no he he had uh just a, a little hammy hamstring issue that that held him out of a couple practices and then hindered him a little bit from going full speed and really opening it up, but it was nothing major. Yeah. So, I mean, he had a good camp, just just kind of was out for a, a period of time. I guess my point is, you know, you, you guys basically declared in the spring there was really all those positions were open. I mean, it was yeah. going to be a competition. Definitely. Did he step up, I guess, uh, and, and reclaim, I guess, his spot? Yeah, I mean, I, it really nothing's changed since before the game. I mean, I still – I went into that game with six guys that played pretty much uh, comparable reps, and I will again this week. It, it, he made a play, no doubt about it, and he, I feel great about the other five making the same play. Uh, he's it, not to take anything away from him, but but he it was a great play. It, it didn't solidify anything other than he is a starter, just like the other five guys are. As you guys go through the growing pains of a new offensive line and new quarterback, does he need to get better at some of the short and intermediate stuff? I mean, I think you guys opened up with a screen pass to him mm -hmm. to start the game. Yeah, I mean, I think they all need to get better at everything, but <laughs> but he. Uh, that's one of the things he was really committed to in the spring and in, in training camp when he was out there is, is becoming a more complete receiver. And I think that's that's a battle that everyone's fighting. Um, and he's done he's done a good job of that. And, and we really didn't ask him to do much other than those those two plays in the game. But I think he's excited about the opportunity to show that. Will he be more involved, do you think, than, than he has been in the past in some of that short to intermediate stuff? Was, I mean, he's not been a guy that you would typically look at to throw a screen pass to. Yeah, no. I mean, he's he's had a number of them, though. I mean, Iowa last year, he took one for a touchdown. I mean, it's, that's more who's in the game and what the defense dictates. It's not a – we're not a big – place certain guys in certain areas. I mean, I'm rolling six guys, two at each position. Whoever's in the game, whatever the play call is, that's, what's, that's who's executing it. And I feel great about him running an intermediate, short, deep, any route. I feel great about it. And I feel great about the other five also. So it's not – I don't think it's – game plan specific where we're saying, ah, Devin's not good at this, let's let's do it to this guy. It's who happens to be in the game at that moment and who the defense dictated was going to get the ball. But you look at his history, it's almost uncanny. He has made huge mm -hmm. plays here oh, at key moments. I mean, where does that kind of come from, um, you think? <clears throat> um, I, I know it's the play call, one thing, but it's also yeah. him. No, but it's also when, you know, great players have a, a knack for when the game's on the line, the lights are bright, they make the play. And, and that's what separates good players from great players. And he's he's done that a number of times. Um, so I think that's kind of a competitor's creed, if if you will. It's just he's a competitive kid that when the ball's in the air and the, the stage is a big stage and it's time to go win the game, I mean, he's going to go get it. Who's your seventh guy, Zach? You mentioned your top six. Who would be that seventh guy if somebody gets banged up? Uh, probably Johnny Dixon right now. Just it's kind of week to week, and Johnny's coming along. And obviously, being a true freshman, we'll hopefully get him involved here soon. But he, he'd probably be number seven today. And where's James Clark at on that? But right there with him, right there with him. Zach, how much room is there for improvement in the offense in general, not just? Oh, I mean, it's it was a it was a, a, a first game where you there was there was kind of growing pains. A lot of guys playing for the first time, so a, a lot of times the team's greatest improvement is from game one to game two. And being as young as we are in some areas and some inex as inexperienced as we are in some areas, this is a huge week for us because you got a chance to develop this offense during spring, during fall camp, and then you go out the first game and you're going to have some of those mistakes that are kind of eyes big, first time playing really, and now it's time to grow through that, develop through that, and come out Saturday and show that improvement that was made. Zach, I know that you uh, recruit Virginia and you were mm -hmm. involved closely in bringing Jalen Holmes here. Mm -hmm. How much while you're out there do you feel like Virginia Tech has that home influence on some of those guys? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Virginia is a hard, a hard state to recruit. I mean, from UVA to Virginia Tech, I mean, there's deep ties in that state. Uh, and it's, it's tough to get a kid out of there. It's not. There's some states where it's transient. Guys leave all the time. Virginia is not one of them. It's tough to get kids out of there. And, but you guys have had a lot of success. Mm -hmm. I mean, Curtis Grant was definitely. Star, I mean, Holmes, definitely. And the list goes on. And I mean, even Penn State. and. Yeah. Why do you guys? Why do you feel like not only you, but you know some of the other 
coaches in the Big Ten have, have had more success in recent years in, in grabbing guys out of there? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's – I don't know how much – obviously being here two years now, two and a half years, I don't know how much that focus was there before. I know I know that we, they went down and got Curtis Grant, mm -hmm. but I don't know that they had somebody full-time in Virginia like I have been. Um, and I don't know other schools really, but I think – like anything, when you give more effort, you put more focus on it, you're going to yield better results. So that's been a focus of ours as one area that we were going to recruit. And we still need to see more production out of that area. Yeah, Virginia's been like a place that has had a ton of talent for a long oh, time. Yeah. But like, why do you think that so many schools, even Ohio State, has now made that an emphasis? Um, I think they just they have a lot of talent, and it's it's close by. I mean, we're trying to get the best player in the country at every position. So if, if that kid exists in Norfolk, Virginia or Columbus, Ohio, we're going to go get him. So I, I, don't, I don't know that it's as much of an emphasis as a staff as much as we're going to go get the best player in the country. Where are they? Virginia happens to have them. That's where we're going to go. Hey, Zach, Bud Foster's defenses are known for interceptions. Mm -hmm. Is that something your receivers have to be cognizant of? And if, if so, what is it that they can do about it? Well, I mean, they, you watch Virginia Tech, they really have two, two different styles of defense. One of them is just straight man coverage. So, I mean, the receiver's job is to get open. If he's not open, interceptions are likely. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, and then the, the other one is his zone coverage where it's really we got to run great routes and get into open windows, and the quarterback's got to read it, and, and that's kind of on, on him a little bit too. But when, when you, whenever you play man coverage, it's really simple. You get open or you don't. If you get open, there's no interceptions. If you don't, there, there's a chance, right? So that's, that's our job, to make sure when, it's, when, when we get the ball, we're open for JT. So how do you explain the way you guys started and finished? I mean, it's almost like two different offenses out there. You go from um, three punt, or two punts and a field goal to finishing mm -hmm. with three long touchdowns, mm -hmm. uh, one quick and the other two you know, pretty methodical. Yeah, I think – it kind of goes back to what I said earlier, but we were inexperienced in some spots. We did some things to sh shoot ourselves in the foot. Navy did some great things to to slow us down or or, or made a play here or there that kind of stopped a drive. And it's hard it's hard to score in college football. I mean, it's one mistake and and your your drive's dead. 